Exactly. You guys are so brave. <laughs> For those who are about to science, we salute you. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Today, I'm meeting with biologist Dr. LaTanya Jackson, who is researching how runoff pollution is affecting local ecosystems and people. Let's check in with LaTanya and see what she's been learning. LaTanya? Hey, Chris, how, how are you? Good to see you. Ah. <laughs> so, tell me, what is runoff pollution? Uh, simply put, runoff pollution is anything that can run into a body of water that's coming from the land, the street, or anything else, like after rain, um, okay. for example. What goes down the drains, what goes down to the street, and out to places like this, this beautiful lake. It runs off into the lake. Okay. So what are some issues specifically with Cincinnati that we've been dealing with, like this runoff pollution? Being in an urban area, you have a lot of cars that drive on the streets and so on. And when you have like rainstorms like we have been having lately, all of the runoff from the streets are going down the drains and you're looking at stuff like metals, you're looking at plastics, you're looking at um, anything that somebody throws out on the streets. Kind of like when you put shampoo in your hair and then you rinse it off, it just all kind of rinses down the drain and just gets into all these different water ecosystems, yes. all this pollution. Okay, so uh, what are some particularly hazardous chemicals or, or damaging chemicals for our, our local environment here? Oh, wow, you have said a mouthful there. <laughs> uh, shampoos, like you said, our personal care products, um, those contain certain chemicals that, although they work for us, they react with organisms out in the environment as well. Um, we also talk in stuff like um, the things that we clean with, okay, our bleaches, our um, our uh, cleaning solutions. Um, I don't want to name any in particular, you know, get anybody in trouble, but those things that we use to clean our cabinets, clean our floors with, they all get down the drain and eventually everything ends up going into the water. And I'm sure, you know, there, there are factories and things that use chemicals and that ends up kind of getting into the water system as well, right? Yes, yes it does. Now does how we use the land, like being in a city, uh, you, you talk a lot about the roads. Does the mm -hmm. that concrete have anything to? Uh, does that that you know exacerbate the problem? Unlike the ground, the concrete doesn't soak up a lot of the things. So when you have an area like this, where you have the soil, where you have plants and everything else, it helps um, with those contaminants to an extent. Well, the concrete doesn't have that, so everything just washes right off it of it. Wa right? Yeah, it's just like yeah. a hard surface. There's nothing to absorb exactly. it. Exactly. Nothing at all, and it just washes it right on out. Well, are, are you taking some data today? Actually, I am. You want to come and see? Yeah, of course I do. All right, <laughs> all right let's, let's go. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so basically, what I'll do is I'll take these fish and I'll put them into oh. homemade little fish cages. Now, I like how low tech it is. Right. It is very low tech, yeah. but it is uh, it's going to get me the answers that I need. Yeah. So basically what I want is this to look kind of like a fish bowl to them, mm -hmm. but I want the water to be able to flow through. This is why I have the screens here on the end. So that water is permeable through there and they can kind of, whatever toxins are in the water, they'll get exactly into their bodies. exactly okay. and this the mesh on the screen or the the holes in the screen is going to be big enough to let in things that they can eat like algae okay. like inverts you know little uh small bugs in the water so it'll keep them stuck in there yes okay yes because we do not want them to be out there in the water you know just going willy dilly and then doing their own thing yeah all right and besides i wouldn't be able to measure them if they do that <laughs> yeah you wouldn't be able to Okay. bring it back a really small fish right so basically this is just a huge pvc pipe the same yeah. type of pipes that you have in your home all right and this nice handy dandy zip ties <laughs> that i just put together what i'll do is i'll add the fish right before we get into the water okay. add the fish the zip ties tighten it to where i can't pull it off okay that means if I can't pull it off, the fish can't bump they can't it swim. and they the can't get it They can't wipe exactly. it off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we'll put the fish in there and then what we'll do is we're lowered it into the water. Okay. 
away and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna get the fish out of there. And from there, I'll bring them to, back to the lab and that's where I'll measure their length. That's where I'll measure everything that's going on. So, Latonya, what has uh, our data shown us about how the fish have reacted to some of our local streams and rivers? All right, so what I have seen um, in, in my data here that we just collected and data that I've collected over the years is that um, our waters have um, a lot of hormones in them and like estrogens and this is not necessarily hormones from medicines although those get down the drain as well and they are still activated when they get out in the waterways so that's part of the reason but other parts of the reason are like plastics you know they have synthetic estrogens in them and they react the same way as their uh, natural hormones are so what it is doing is it's feminizing the male fish so basically the male fish are producing eggs as well as sperm oh wow yeah that can be a real problem for populations though exactly it can be because for these fish in particular the males are smaller than the females and in order for them to mate with the females they literally have to get into the female's blind spot um, to thrust for the gonopodium, which is the anal fins that have been fused together and looks like a hypodermic needle and they deliver the sperm pack to the female through that. Well, the bigger they are, the less likely they are to be able to get into the female's blind spot. She can always see them. So they don't have a chance of mating uh. with her. And it can also be a problem because they're not producing as much sperm. So that could indicate that if you're not producing as much sperm, and you're not getting as many chances to reproduce, the population levels can actually go down. They'll go way down if they're not reprodu able to reproduce. Exactly, and they can totally collapse. So you can have a wipeout of the local populations of these fish. Wow, cool. Well, what are some other things that people can do at home to make sure that some of these pollutants aren't getting in our local waterways? Um, you want to not wash your clothes every day like you know cut down on the amount of times you're washing if you can get by washing once a week please by all means do so you want to i i'm definitely doing that right i just want oh, to make yeah, sure that right. I, I, like, <laughs> i'm not doing laundry once a week so i'm not, i just want to make sure everyone know that i'm doing my part with laundry all right <laughs> <laughs> what you also want to do is for you uh, for showers take showers instead of baths you use less water there um, you also want to, with your cleaning products, we don't want you to not use the cleaning products, but we want you to use environmentally friendly cleaning products. So, in other words, you don't need a gallon of bleach for that one little stain on your counter. You know, be, um, use some elbow grease, yeah, you know, right. every now and again. But yeah, use environmentally friendly cleaning products, use environmentally friendly laundry detergents and soaps and things like that, and you'll be doing your part. And Less is more. So when you don't have to use a whole lot, don't use a whole lot. And I'm sure cutting down on single-use plastics, and if you do have to use plastics, make sure you recycle those plastics. That way those plastics don't get uh, into our water stream. It probably helps a lot too. Hey, cut out the plastics when you, when you don't have to. And like you said, single-use plastics, make a reuse for them. That sounds good. Well, Latonya, thank you so much for inviting me out uh, to check in on the health of our local waterways and the ecosystems here. I think it's just really cool how you're measuring the, the runoff pollution and how it's affecting the, the local wildlife. Oh, you're welcome. Come back anytime. I will. I'll take you up on that. All right. All right. And we'll see you next time on Science Around Sense. <laughs>